Assalamu alaikum, my name is Haris Tehdi and I am here in Medina Tukhmanawra. In today's video, I'll be showing you two special wells that are very historic. There's a lot of rich Islamic history behind them. So before I get started in the video, please make sure to drop a like, leave a comment letting me know if you've ever been to these ziyamas or if you inshallah plan to. Also, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Let's get right into it. We are now starting to leave the boundary of Medina al Manawra, and the two wells that we're going to are Bir Roha and Bir Shifa. As many of you already, alhamdulillah, know, there's great religious and historical significance with both of these wells. So the very first one that we're going to is Bir Roha, and this is right outside Medina. It's about 80 kilometers from Majd al Nabawi, and there are many hadiths about this particular well. It's mentioned in Majma uz Zawaid. Hazrat Anas and Abu Musa al Ash'ari an, report that the Prophet وسلم, said that indeed 70 Anbiya prophets had passed the hill of Roha en route to the house of Allah, the Kaaba. And it's also mentioned in Fatul Bari that Amr ibn Awf an, reports that the Prophet وسلم, said indeed 70 Anbiya prophets prayed Salah in this masjid at Roha. Indeed, this well is a very historically and Islamically significant well and location. The cost of travel from Majid Navi to Bir Roha and then Bir Shifa was roughly about 200 to 300 Saudi Riyals round trip. And the total trip lasts about two to three hours total. Okay, so now we're getting into the area of Bir Roha. And real quick, I'm gonna show you guys on the map exactly where this is located so that if uh, you ever plan to drive here or you have somebody who's driving you who might not be familiar with the area, knows how to get here. I'll also make sure to drop the location of this well along with the second well in the description. So just make sure to check that out. So right in the vicinity of this well is a lot of historic buildings. I don't know the exact dates of them, but they seem very, very historic, possibly over 500, 600 years old. And uh, all of them are actually really in bad shape as a matter of fact, the entire area is actually in really bad shape. It doesn't look like it's been maintained, which is actually pretty sad. Knowing that this is a historical site, not only for Muslims, but people of other faiths as well. So seeing the condition of this really brought tears in my eyes that it's in such bad shape. There's wild animals eating garbage over here. So for example, you can see this camel right here. There's wild dogs, there's donkeys, and all kinds of uh, garbage everywhere scattered. It's unbelievable, actually. I hope by watching this that, inshallah, it'll raise enough awareness to make some sort of an impact to maintain this significant site so that sites like these can be preserved for the future generations. So me and my dad are walking inside of the vicinity of the well right now and our driver uh, is showing us around. We actually picked up these two bottles um, as you can see in my hands. There was somebody outside of the entrance of the well selling them for two for 10 reals. So we picked up two of them and I'm gonna actually zoom in on one of the signs on this well so that you can read it. And you can you know feel free to pause the video here so that you can actually read in full detail. I'm trying to show you inside the well. It's kind of hard to see because uh, it's very 
deep and dark, but you can kind of see that there's some water there, um, and it's a very deep well. But alhamdulillah, to this day, there's water coming from this well to this day, which is mind-blowing. Now my driver is actually taking one of the bottles and he's going to fill it up at the pipes where the water is fed through. And you can actually drink the water directly from this pipe if you wish to. And just to note, these are not the best for travel. These are only good for transporting. If you want to like take you know, the water back home or anything like that, you're going to have to put that in more of a secure bottle and put it into your suitcase because these things do leak if you put them sideways. So here's the water in the bottle now, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, store this away. This building right here is actually the mosque. Well, it used to be a mosque here at Bira Roja. I'm not sure if it's functional to this day. There is no way to access the inside. So after drinking the water here and filling up the bottle, we're heading back to the car. We're going to head to the second well now, Bir Shifa. But before I go, just one more time, look at this scenario right now at this well. It's like... Everything is in pieces, the fence, everything. It's such a hazard to be here. And inshallah, I hope that the people and the government here do something to make the site more well kept. So now we're heading to Bir Shifa and Bir Shifa is roughly another 80 kilometers away from Bir Roja. So a total of about 150 to 160 kilometers from Medina to Manawara. Uh, I just want to point out that Bir Shifa is actually pretty close to Badr. So if you're planning to make a ziyara of Bir Roja and Bir Shifa, I would advise to also go to Badr as well and pay your respects there. All three of these ziyaras literally come in line. So it's best to plan your trip like that. Now, while we're on the way to Bir Shifa, I want to kind of get into the background story of Bir Shifa and the miracle, rather, of Bir Shifa. So there's a saying that Bir Shifa was dug to assist Muslim travelers who were on their way for Hajj and Umrah and would get thirsty, so they needed water because essentially this is a desert. So actually, when this well was dug, the water was bitter, salty, and even some considered it poisonous. So basically undrinkable, meaning it would harm you if you drank it. And it was bad to a point that even animals would not drink this water. But the water was turned sweet and drinkable by a miracle. It said that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was informed about this water and how it was potentially poisonous and bitter. So the Prophet وسلم, visited the well and spat in the water, which allowed the water to become sweet and healthy and also drinkable, meaning it was not poisonous anymore. And as a matter of fact, it was healthy. So the reason why it's called Bir Shifa is because it gives Shifa to the drinker, it gives health to the drinker. It's actually a blessed water and has healing properties. So people who drink this water do tend to get healthier. So for example, if you're feeling ill, like you have a stomach ache and you drink this water, you will feel better. As you can see, we've reached Bir Shifa now. And it's distinctive because there's a little building. It's actually a masjid that seems abandoned next to the well. It's a miracle that 
you know, this well is over 1400 years old and it still provides Muslim travelers with healthy drinking water in the middle of the desert. And what's even a bigger miracle is the fact that it was originally poisonous and through the miracle of Allah, it became healthy and sweet. So I'm walking up to the well right now and I'm gonna actually just show you guys what it looks like from the inside real quick. I just want you to take note of the construction quality of the well. You can see it's a very old style and that goes to show that this is indeed a really old well. Alhamdulillah. You can see some of the water at the bottom as well. It's about 15 to 20 meters deep. And we're gonna actually fill up a bottle here at the reservoir. You can see on the left if you're facing the well. And there's a little metal pipe that goes all the way to that reservoir that stores the water. So they have a little knob and you can fill the water from there. But before we fill the water, me and my driver both wanted to drink out of the water and uh, I also wanna give some to my father as well. So you see us filling it right now and we're both gonna take three sips for Sunnah and then uh, I'll give the bottle to my father. So before we leave the ziyara, I just want to just show you guys what the masjid looks like, the current condition of it, and also kind of give you an overview of the current conditions of this area as well. And just as Bita Roja, this site is also not well kept. It's actually in really bad shape as well. There's a lot of garbage around and you know debris and stuff like that. Let's walk to the masjid real quick and you guys can kind of get a good look inside. I have my shoes on so I don't want to step inside, but you guys can see the current condition. Looks like there's some vandalism done too, which is a stuck for Allah, such a shame. So that little building that you see right behind the masjid, right next to it is actually the Qabr Mubarak of a Sahabi an, who was injured during the Battle of Badr. And on the way back, he had become Shaheed here. In my language, you say dunya se parda for magata. So the Sahabi that was buried here, his name is Sayyidina Ubeda bin Harasa an, kindly make sure to pay your respects. I just want to say that I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants my brothers and sisters the chance to visit these ziyaras inshallah and accept your ziyarats inshallah thank you so much for watching this video please make sure if you enjoyed the video to hit the like button and also if you have not already subscribed to my channel make sure to subscribe i've been checking the stats and i see that roughly about 90 percent of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel please make sure to subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you are notified whenever i upload a new video and that you stay up to date inshallah till then i will see you guys in the next video jazakallah khair